My question is, um, I, 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 I admire the work you do greatly, and exposing corruption is immensely important. But ultimately, what we want to do is forestall, prevent, reduce corruption. So my question is, in the work that you've been doing, is, is there evidence um, that, that this kind of uh, anti-corruption, exposing corruption, is actually having some effect on, on reducing the incidence of corruption? And I, I should explain why I'm asking this. One, one is from the point of view of a donor, um, I sometimes hear the question raised, well, we all intuitively know that anti-corruption work and FOI work is, is, is very important, but what's ultimately the evidence that it's producing social benefits? And second, I, I want to avoid using the phrase, this is, the, I promise, the last time I, I used the phrase unintended consequences, but one of the un, unintended consequences of this kind of work is that by constantly uncovering corruption and, and creating scandals, what we may be doing is, is uh, creating a, a public sphere, a public discussion about political issues, which is organized around scandals and, and exposing evil individuals, rather than a rational discussion about collective problems and collective solutions. So, back to the question, what, what's the evidence that, that this work is actually reducing corruption? Okay. Um, and it is true that there's been a lot of concern, for example, the corruption perception indexes and raising awareness of corruption, it only makes people even more cynical and possibly even more ready to pay a bribe because if you know your country has 80% level of corruption, then what possible hope of you of not getting, <laughs> of reducing it? So there, there, there are those concerns. Carlos, do you want to start with that? Well, in our case, we do more prevention through systematic reporting and less... Uh, naming and shaming uh, through uh, individual cases that we might expose. Ours is uh, lesser research on a specific case and more a systematic monitoring of expenditures in a big number of regions so that people are aware of how monies are handled and what, what is the decision-making process and what are the priorities. Now, in certain cases, we have resorted to the idea of the scandal. We found out that uh, the government had uh, reached a deal with mining companies by which instead of paying a 50% uh, say windfall profit tax, they had accepted a voluntary donation that was 5% of what they should have been paying in taxes. And we did make a scandal on that and we put forward all the information regarding the windfall profits that companies were making and how much money the government was losing by reaching that kind of deal that was reached under the table without public discussion. But that for us was an exception, no? Uh, now, and I wanted to add that in, in that line of prevention and building this systematic relation, we even go to the extreme, and this may sound like a conflict of interest, but that's, we have decided, and we do it, we go to the extreme of consulting with the involved officials the draft of our next report. We go and we say, with all the available information, we are going to publish this next week. You have the last chance to clarify. We are saying that you didn't respond to this request, and we are saying that based on available information, you are spending the money in a very, very stupid way, and that you are very, very inefficient because you have only spent 20% of your budget, and we're already in November. So they have like a last chance to clarify information, to rectify information, to give us, no, what they refused to give us in the first moment, for the sake of avoiding this kind of uh, exposure. No? So we, we really try to focus on that. But that's just a strategy. That's the nature of an institution, and I have all respect for other strategies no? that, that focus more on following cases and, and having a, a exemplary cases and, and going public all the time with certain cases that will illustrate uh, broader problems. I'm not saying that this is better or worse. It's just uh, one strategy. Uh, and, and just to clarify, Carlos, do you have any data which shows that your preventive approach has had an impact on the level of corruption? Well, yes. When, when we started, there were a lot of uh, refusals to provide information. And we started at, 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 at the very same time that the law had been approved and public officials were not aware of the law, didn't care about the law, or were not aware that they were in a new situation. <laughs> they had to comply with the law even if they uh, didn't want to. So I, I think that we have um, um, managed to uh, 
I don't know if we have sort of diminished corruption. We have uh, forced an improvement, that, that I can say, on the transparency portals and web pages of, of, of half of the regional governments in Peru, and that's very well documented the way since we started monitoring and publishing. No, they have really improved. Uh, we have uh, um, uh, created a, a local uh, journalism that is much more aware about budgeting issues, and you can see in the local newspapers and radios the way budget issues are, are being discussed openly. Uh, and, uh, but we don't have like a, we don't have a way of saying, and, and because of that, uh, yeah. uh, lesser obscure deals have taken place. We, we don't have a way to, uh, to to document that. No. Okay. Okay, that's great, and also interesting to note that you've also had an impact on the quality of journalism as well. Um, Banya. First of all, uh, I mean. It's very hard for me to talk in general terms. I much more prefer talking in very concrete things. So I'll give you two examples because I don't really believe in those. Oh, I don't really believe in those. Uh, uh, you know what it means corruption perception index that the people think that there is more or less corruption. Does it mean that there is really more or less corruption or it's just their perception? So I wouldn't be using that kind of things. So I'll give you two very concrete examples. Uh, when Montenegro was about to adopt law and conflict of interest. It was lost for two years. The government was claiming it's in the parliament. The parliament was claiming it's in the government for two years. Then we found out that all member, that four deputy prime ministers and six ministers are uh, all together in over 20 boards of directors of different companies, the biggest companies, which were about to be privatized. When we published that, they discovered the law and they adopted the law. And uh, all, mem all those guys left all those companies immediately as, uh, after we got the decision of the Constitutional Court that it was against the Constitution. Another little example, which I will be telling you more about it later. We are very much naming names. We are naming names of individuals which are quite high level. We are also naming names of people who, in my country, citizens don't dare to mention their names in public. We call to them, one of them we call the one whose name shouldn't be mentioned. So we name those names and on the basis of naming names we are trying to change the policies. We managed to change the long construction and now illegal construction which was the primarily work of Mr. Marovic is a criminal act. So it's very hard to say in general, but what we are trying to do is by disclosing very concrete cases of corruption to change whether policies or laws or their enforcement. I, I don't know, I can speak only for a country in transition. I don't know, maybe there is a, a country who has very wise politicians who welcome uh, opinions of uh, public uh, public sphere or uh, civil society and they, uh, they really like their work and they want to do reforms, but that's not the country I live in. And I think that one of the things uh, about countries in transition is that uh, huge amounts of uh, money change ownership from state to, uh, to private owned. And I think that once, whenever you have a situation like this, you always have, have a, a small group of informed, powerful people who want that pot of money. And um, so you need to work on scandals and, and on concrete cases because it's happening. No matter if you want it or not, it's already happening. So you have to highlight it. And we, are, we, we noticed two things. One is that, that when you show them that you watch closely a certain arena, they will not dare to be so, uh, so blunt with, uh, so, so, with, with their tactics. And they start to be careful. And the second, uh, the scandals usually produce a very valuable uh, public debate which leads to, the, to, to systemic changes and changes of the law. Like for example, I can show you one scandal we've been working on recently and it immediately uh, resulted to the change of the law on public procurement. Or for example, when we previously concentrated on uh, party finance and we've, we've been disclosing scandals about party finance, we were simultaneously working on, uh, on, a, on a new draft of the law and we tried to close the loopholes. So, so I agree with you that the civil society can't be part of the tabloid journalism and you have to always keep in mind uh, ethics of your work and the wider goal of your work. 